Hey everybody, welcome back, Falcon, out there, Omega Edition. Alrighty, so, um, last episode ended really, really terrible for me. Um, we were having a pretty damn good run for our first run in the series itself, and then a minor little oversight, as you saw, completely threw everything into chaotic fucking nature. We were basically stranded with absolutely no way to jump to another system or to another planet. It was pretty terrible. Um, I blame myself partially for not realizing that that planet didn't have the interplanetary um, reactor, but number two, that one event that just shot us into the middle of nowhere also kind of helped matters a bit proceed forward. So, you know, you know, it happens. I'm a bit salty about it because it was going really, really good, and, you know, so be it. Either way, episode number three, let's start a new run here. Um, thankfully, now we kind of, you should know the, the, the basics by now, and so do I, so we can just kind of flow through it a little bit easier and see what happens. So we have two yellow dwarfs to start off with. We also have a yellow dwarf over here. Um, do you want to jump to the small ones? Just go straight up over here for 28 fuel. I'm gonna say we go to a small one first and see what happens, and then just kind of try to acquire some resources over here. Day 9. It is so large that first I thought it'd be some sort of strange polygonal moon. But in fact, this was a ship. The carcass of this colossal spacecraft is so big that my ship could easily fly through any of its cross passages. Most definitely, this ship was built by a race of giants. Deities? Dead deities. The vessel appears to be ruined and deserted. Uh, yeah, we're gonna investigate it. Why the fuck not? <clears throat> I fly into the large ship. The light inside my cockpit projects strange shadows on the titanic corridors. In the heart of the vessel I have found an intact module of unknown origin, but its proportions are so immense that I cannot take it with me. I study it from all angles to try to reproduce it later. But my scurry accelerations disturb the delicate balance of this place and the ship's construction starts to crumble. How is that even possible considering it's a giant ship and you're such a small little thing? <laughs> Whatever. Falling fragments are hitting my hull, I retreat rapidly, leaving the collapsing ship behind. Whew. That was close. So we're going to take some whole damage over here, but maybe we get a technology. Yes, we got the Tau Stasis. Is that good? I don't know. It sounds good. But yeah, we took we took 10 damage. But that's okay. Let's find out what this um, technology is all about here. Tau Stasis. Um, this module alters the flow of time around the ship. It works only when the ship is in pocket universe created by the space folder. With it, the ship can jump much further. Oh, that sounds really good. That sounds really good. It requires six, um... Is that Tungsten? Tungsten? I think that's what it is. Alrighty, so if we could find six, we could actually create that, which makes us, um, lets us, uh, jump further, which is pretty good. Alrighty, so let's start off by, I guess, clearing up the whole damage over here, and we might as well just kind of, um, get the fuel situated. Now, over here we have Rocky Planet, which I'm gonna probably check out in case we could find the, um, required, um, minerals for the Tal Stasis that we just found. Let's go over here to the Gas Giant, orbit this bad boy. And we took a significant amount of damage, I'm not too happy about it, but so be it. Let's, um, probe for about six, I'm gonna say. Nice. Good amount of fuel. And we will definitely keep doing this for a bit longer then. Excellent. So far, we are still getting more than we're actually using. And that's gonna be it. Excellent. Alrighty. Worth our time, definitely. Let's finish up. And we might as well just fuel up a little bit with this extra hydrogen that we have over here. We have some helium and hydrogen. I'm liking it. Let's swap you guys around. Okay. So that's done with. Let us go over to this planet and see if we can find some of this material needed for the town stasis. I doubt we're going to find it this early on, but, you know. So, oh, oh my lord, is that? <gasps> roach people, roach people. I'm not sure that's even a roach. I'm not sure what you are, but you're fucking terrifying. You look like a roach. You're like a, a throne of some kind. Ugh, heebie-jeebies, man. Okay. A mile-high column, downed, the great throne of a grotesque emperor, dead for millennia. A giant insect, long since dried, died on it. Oh, <laughs> you don't know if it's dead, it's an insect. It's probably like hibernating inside of its fucking carcass. Ugh, I hate insects, man. It's one of my biggest phobias of all time. Uh, the throne is made out of scavenged alien ship components. I spot a module that does not seem too much damage. Let's see what I can do with it. Oh, though, be careful, man. We found a Void Fluctuation projection, Projector. Well, I mean, that was worth our time, definitely. What is that? Void Fluctuation Projector. Um, This unbelievable device generates virtual particles out of the quantum void to instantly shield the vessel against all damage. It requires a shield generator to work. Oh, we don't have that. I believe, I want to say, didn't we have the shield generator on the... On the Maya ship that we acquired, on the second episode that we, you know, squandered away. I'm pretty sure we had a shield generator. So, in order to make this, we're going to have to get the shield generator first, and then this bad boy over here. So, it's a two-step process. So, 
Sure, it's nice to have it now, but unless we get the shield generator, we can't really do much with it. And again, this also requires some of the tungsten as well. And also, whatever the hell the W was again. Alrighty, so, um, hey, we, at least we have it. Now, let's come over here, and do we want to drill? Absolutely, I think we have extra fuel, right? So let's actually fix up our hole here a little bit. And, uh, yeah, I guess we'll probably fuel up a little bit as well. There you go, perfect. Now let's drill a bit here. Um, we'll squander away six fuel for now. Holy shit. So this right here says that we could probably make the towel stasis right off the bat. We should keep drilling because, you know what, we actually got a lot of good items here. So yeah, I will definitely drill again. More platinum. I would have loved like, some more tungsten, but that's okay. We'll take this as well, and we will also take, um, hull repair as well. Um, before I drill possibly one more time, let's come over here really quickly. And let's repair our hole for one. And then number two, let's actually create the towel stasis, which you actually can do now. Equipment installed. Okay. And again, this is again going to do... Um, this module alters the flow of time around the ship. It works only when the ship is in the pocket universe created by the space folder. With it, the ship can jump much farther. So that's really, really good to have. I'm pretty excited about that. Alrighty, so we still have some more iron over here. We have some oxygen. Um... I think that's pretty much it, right? Yeah, let's not mine this area anymore. Let's conserve or preserve our fuel, I should say. Um, our power has gone up, as you can see now, because of the towel stasis. So we've gone up to two, uh, four from two. So that's a pretty good start. Alrighty, let's take off out of here. And let's see here. There is a giant over here. We can get, try to hopefully get some gas from. Hmm. How's our gas supply looking right now? We have 16 helium. We're at 80 right now. We could take some da we can take some damage, but we do have a little bit of iron, in case that actually does happen. I'm gonna say we play a little bit risky here, let's check it out. We took 32 damage, that's really, really risky, Falcon. Alrighty, so, yeah, let's launch the probe. Oh, that was not worth our time <laughs> whatsoever. Okay, well, you know, it happens sometimes. Let's go ahead and drop this in here. And let's hold on to that for now. Let's do a jump, let's get out of here. Alright, as you can see now, because of the stasis, we have a much bigger jump, which is going to actually open up things for us. I mean, it's still going to cost us a lot of fuel to get to that jump point, exactly, right? 34. But, um, at least it kind of lets us avoid some, you know, bad jumps in general. We have a Yellow Dwarf at 10 and 14, or 10 and 4, Yellow Dwarf 11 and 5. It actually has reduced our cost as well of fuel per jump. Because usually this would cost us, like, you know, probably like 16 or so, and now it's down to 10. So it does, it has helped us out a little bit. So we have some Novas, and we also have some Dwarves, Red Dwarf, 31. I'm going to say we jump, oof, we can definitely want to avoid that black hole. Let's jump to this Yellow Dwarf first and see if we can find something of value. Day 18. I have just landed on a small and quite pleasant planet. The trees here are huge, and their intertwined roots cover the soil like a labyrinth. They vibrate in time with my steps like if they were alive. <clears throat> the oxygen, it feels so good to walk around without a helmet. Large and fragrant purple fruits are so tempting to taste, but I don't want to risk my life. Suddenly, I hear a crackling noise from where I came and see the beach and a woman's silhouette, just like in the movies of the 50s, featuring pretty women inhabiting exotic planets. Okay, this sounds too good to be true, right? Uh, <laughs> this sounds too good to be true, right? So why do I want to do it? Why don't you guys tell me what to do? <laughs> you're telling me to go to the ship, right? That would be the safe bet here. Continue our journey. Obviously, things are going too well for me to meet this woman, but at the same time, maybe she'll give me something good. <laughs> Let's meet the woman. This could be the end of it. I go towards the beach. In fact, there is no beach or sea, just roots. The beach is there, further away. I make one more step, and it draws farther away like a rainbow. The woman is sitting on the sand, farther away than before. I sigh, disappointed by this bitter deception. This is all just a delusion. A delusion triggered by the smell of these fruits. Overwhelmed with gloomy promotions, I run back to the ship. I was right. Roots of the trees entwine my ship. Trying to imprison me here, I run inside and start the engines to burn this hostile forest. Oh, fuck. So we took some damage, and hey, we got oxygen at the very least. I'm pretty sure we would have gotten the oxygen without taking damage that I left beforehand. But, you know, so be it. I had to, you know, test it out. At least we didn't die. This is the planet we were just at right now, right? So we could orbit there, but <laughs> you saw what happened last time. Um, let's fix up our hole number one here. Okay. So we're not looking bad. Or that's At least we're not looking bad. We have two gas giants we can try to get some, you know, fuel from. We're at 57 fuel right now, so let's actually use up some of the helium. 
That shit fills up right now with a little bit left over. You come over here, my friend, and you move over here. So, I'm thinking we probably... I'm gonna go to the breedable planet just to try to mine it out at the very least. And also, probably refill my oxygen as well. Alright, so oxygen is filled up, and there you go. So now we're here. Um, let's go over here and encounter life. What the hell are you supposed to be? Uh, okay, whatever, dog. The alien places something underground and it runs away. We got some Omega, and we also learned some new words. We have want and we have Omega. So he wanted Omega, apparently. Or maybe he was asking me if I wanted Omega. I absolutely do. So thank you for that. Now, do we drill? Absolutely. So let's drill a little bit over here, and we found some gold, if I am correct. We also found some more oxygen. I don't really care about the oxygen too much, and we have some carbon. Rarely ever use carbon, so I think we are done here. No more drilling. Let us get out of here. I said, let us take off, my friend. And we're going to go to a gas giant and hopefully get some more gas here. Please don't damage me. Please don't damage me. 18 damage? Yeah. Well, it's damage, but whatever. Uh, we are going to probe it, perhaps. Let's see. I feel like we should, but we have no empty spaces at the moment, so that could be a problem. We might actually have to get rid of this uh, gold, as a matter of fact. This is required for one of the technologies that we found, and so is this. Platinum, not really, but platinum's kind of rare, too. You know what? Let's use the Omega on our hull, just in case. Alrighty, let's uh, probe away over here. We'll use, um, yeah, six sounds pretty good. Fourteen, not exactly the greatest trade-off, so we are basically... Let me do it one more time. Yeah, that's it. Finish up. At least I'll be able to fill up my fuel supply with the hydrogen we just acquired. So I should bring us up to like 90-something right now, I'm pretty sure. There you go, 99, exactly. Excellent. Alrighty, so it was kind of worth it for that regard, at least. Not really the whole damage, but so be it. Now, what's our next jump here? We have a black hole, we're not going there. Red dwarf. Black hole, not going there. Supernova, I'm worried about that. Red dwarf. And a blue giant. Blue giant's gonna be pretty good for fuel. Actually, no. Not the giant. We can't even do anything on the big giant planets right now. Or the systems, anyway. Blue giant and supernova. So we're kind of limited in terms of jumps here. Not going to that black hole, so I think red dwarf is basically our best bet right now. Yeah. So red dwarf it is. Day 27. The star field did look a little odd, but when my engine suddenly shut down, I knew I was in trouble. I'm in a big cloud, liquid and transparent. I analyze it, and it's pure alcohol. Ethyl formates to be exact. An organic... Es an organic ester that smells like rum. I fill some sample tubes with it while well, considering how to escape the situation. I have an idea, just drink it and just um, have a good time, man. But, let's see, power the engines or jettison some cargo? Well, if I power engines, I have to imagine I'm going to probably waste a lot of fuel. I could jettison some cargo, but everything that I do have, I kind of want and need. Yeah. Boy, oh boy. What are you going to jettison? A kilo at a time, I eject cargo through a makeshift pipe, producing a whole meat proportion similar to that you that used millennia ago by ancient human ships. I get up some speed and reach the surface without trouble other than for those loss of cargo, which I guess is an okay trade-off. Why don't you throw away? Uh, <laughs> I'm not happy about that. I don't care about the oxygen too much. We just have to find a breedable planet and we're fine. The tungsten, though, man. Come on, we needed that to make this shit down here. How could you? At least throw away the fucking gold or the platinum. Alrighty. Not happy about that uh, outcome. Rocky planet. Rocky planet. Gas giant. Alrighty. So, how's our fuel looking like? We have six helium, two oxygen. Might as well drop this oxygen now. Alrighty. We are going to go... I'm going to say we, number one, go and try to get some fuel. And then we'll probably hit up one of those rocky planets. And hopefully something... Oh, 16 damage! Eh, not too crazy about it, but so be it. Let's launch a probe at 6, and we found a lot of gas, which is good. A, actually, a shit ton of it, to be honest with you. We'll launch again. Good. Very, very good. Very, very good. We have a lot of um, fuel now. So, let's come over here, and we will drop one helium, and we'll also drop the 15. And now we're going to go to one of the planets and actually mine that out. So, we're gonna go, which one do we want? Metallic ore, doesn't really matter. I guess we'll check this one out over here. Confirm and land. Okay, we are definitely gonna drill. 
I'm going to save for five right now, see what's around here. Okay, nice. We got this kind of back now. And we also have some hull, which is good because we are taking some hull damage right now. So let me finish off here. Let's also repair our hull. There you go. And we are going to drill again. Very nice. Eleven. Perfect. More of this over here. So we basically made up the tungsten that we lost, so that's an upside. And we also have, this is hefnium, if I'm right. Hafnium. It's very rare metal. It's a uh, critical importance in every device related to energy production. Well, none of the formulas that I have right now really require you, so I don't think I need you at the moment. But you might me you might be a little bit more rare than gold. So I'll leave the gold behind and take you instead. I hope that's the right call here. Let's finish up. Let me also use up the iron that we just found. And you know what? Let me just drill one more time. Eh, not really as great as the last one was, but so be it. Let's max you out, and we'll take the hafnium. That's it. I was hoping for more iron, to actually have an iron supply on me, just in case something goes terribly wrong, but, you know, doesn't always go your way. Let's, um, drop you into the hole for now, then, and we will also fuel up a little bit. And that's about it. Okay. Let's get on out of here. Take off. This oxygen is looking a little bit dire. Let's fuel up one more time here, and... Let's jump out of here. So, we have Black Hole, don't want to go there. Supernova, kind of scary. Red Giant, no. Yellow Dwarf, 25 of 10. Neurons, neutron Star. I don't think I've ever been to a Neutron Star. And it kind of, um, tickles my fancy a little bit. It's going to require a lot of fuel, but luckily we do have some fuel right now. However, we're kind of low on oxygen. So we do have to find an oxygen supply really soon. So I think we probably go to a yellow dwarf and then jump to that one. So we'll avoid supernova and black hole. And we'll avoid red giant. Let's go over to this yellow dwarf first and foremost. And then we'll jump over to that um, neuron star. Day 36. This rocky planet is only one side exposed to the sun. thus giving birth to strangest life forms. While on orbit, I saw a continent of green and blue grass. I start descending slowly near a hill that might contain useful resources. I land. There is an oxygen in the at there is oxygen in the atmosphere. Not much, but I still activate the pumps. I go outside. The air is rare, but pressure is high. I make several straps on the grass, or steps on the grass. It moves. Oh, I realize that this grass is actually millions of tiny creatures trying to escape my trying to escape my steps. With my ship and my boots here, I must have already destroyed millions of them. Well, if I want to get to a mineral deposit that I have noticed earlier, I must advance further. Oof. Okay. Um. I'm not sure we could continue fucking with this race, man. I mean, <laughs> we're, we're kind of like the assholes here in a sense. I feel like Galactus or something. Uh, I want to gather those mater minerals, though. I'm sorry, little guys. I don't think I should care. They are nothing to me. Wow, this guy's a dick. I mean, I'm the one who made him make that choice, but still, why say it in such a way? I got hold of precious minerals and made several return trips to my ship, crushing thousands and thousands of desperately wriggling grass shoots. Are they begging for mercy? I don't care. I leave towards the stars all covered in a green blood and my ship's hold full of nice loot. Well, I mean, you gotta do anything to survive and we got some pretty good, decent items out of it. Um, so I guess there's that. Alrighty. Well, we're gonna call it an episode here then after that asshole, you know, choice by me apparently. And there is a breedable planet so we could come over here and get some oxygen thankfully. So we'll be able to take care of that and so far we're looking good in this run. Hopefully it continues going well. Leave a thumbs up, leave a like, the support does me a lot. I will catch you next time.